Hi. You just look lovely. You cannot hear. Oh, wait. <laughs> Mike, we need the microphone on now. <laughs> oh, she's going to. Okay. There you go. Hello. So, we're all unmuted. Oh. My glasses. Oh, okay. Can we turn this up or how do we do it? Okay. Can you guys hear me okay? Should I put on a mic? No, you're good. You're no, good. it's perfect. It sounds and looks wonderful. What is that art behind you real quick before we get started, Mary? Oh, so this is Ross Terms. And so this is Yamaya. She's actually a, a mermaid goddess. Oh my goodness. Nice. Perfect time in case there's a tidal wave, you know, she can get away either way. Or the tsunami, right? <laughs> there's a tsunami. I'm just going to float away with her. Yes. <laughs> Oh my goodness, May, so good to see you. Uh, so for, uh, can you say the name for everyone watching? Because I don't want to mess it up. You have a lot of syllables going on. What, right? How do you say the whole name? So my name is May Fui Maono Po. Wow. And no relation to Edgar Allen? <laughs> yes. Yes, <laughs> yes actually. I was totally kidding. Wow. No, but it's through my husband's family, so they are like distant Edgar Allan Poe relatives. Wow, that's cool. I mean, it's not like I. That's literally the only other Poe I knew. I, so yeah, it wasn't right. like I just. What What's the chances? Right, and so what is the ethnicity mix, real quick, and then we're going to talk uh, to you about everything. So um, I am Samoan and uh, mainly like Swiss Irish. Oh wow. Lots of Irish. Why you represent? Even <laughs> look, we're pretending to be outside right now. Uh, okay. And and I was mentioning this to May yesterday. Well, May is the owner uh, of Malier Cannabis Clinic, and today's date is three two nine. Yes. About three two nine cards. A lot of people don't know that that's what it is, right? But the to get your medical marijuana cards, the three two nine card, technically, right? Yes, it is. And actually, I was supposed to be, we were like doing a big 329 event today. So oh. um, I know it got canceled, but that's cool. I get to be here with you guys. This so. is our substitute 329 card. And uh, I've been telling people that for me, because my, you know, when this first whole coronavirus thing happened, right? Uh, and I've always wanted to do a podcast. I've told you this about this before, but you know, it's like, I'll get to it. You know, that's the total stoner mentality. I'll get to it. I have an idea. I wrote it down. Okay. But this would seem like the perfect time to actually start to do a you know, little podcast at 420. You know, and uh, I, so I, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going to smoke virtually on Zoom with a friend every day. And it'll just be for like to keep us calm, to talk through these crazy times, right? And then it like, you know, quickly dawned on me like, wait a minute. The coronavirus is like a SARS-2. It's like a respiratory disease. And maybe I should slow down on this, right? So I started slowing down. And today's going to be my last day. It's on 329 day. I'm going to smoke with you. One last day. Tomorrow I'm going full ed edibles with the help of my baker, Tina, here. <laughs> Quarantina, we're calling her. And, <laughs> Quarantina. And yes. And we're going to start dabbling in a world that we really are rookies at, but, you know, that's the whole world right now, right, is learning stuff. So talk to me on my last 3 to 9 day, on 3 to 9 day, my last smoking day. What is happening in Hawaii cannabis industry right now? Yeah, so um, one really amazing thing that happened was um, cannabis got declared essential. So An essential worker. Yes. Um, so... All of the dispensaries um, are able to remain open, um, so there's going to be no disruption in the supply for patients. So that's huge. Um, and then me and a, a lot of our, a lot of my colleagues are moving our practice to 100% virtual. So I actually closed my clinic physically two weeks ago. Um, just because the majority of my patients are um, immunocompromised or over 60. Right, right. So we, and, and there's no way for, for our clinic to safely socially, social distance. I mean, you know, so we just um, erred on the side of caution and, and shut down. 
but but we're still seeing people virtually and that's been really great well i mean kind of just um, like this we can like you know do a do an interview like this and or do you don't even need to do a zoom you just do it by phone or how are you guys connected so, so we're actually using doximity which is an uh an app that's for um specifically for healthcare providers so we're doing it via phone just because not everybody has um video right. capability right. um you know i still am calling a bunch of people on their landlines wow. so, <laughs> i know well, a lot of like old crap is just coming out. Like we were playing Uno the other day. I mean, shit is just going wild. We're pulling shit from the seventies, the sixties. Like, right? <laughs> I, mean, I have know. a feeling my kids are going to be like, "What's a landline?" <laughs> <laughs> it's like the millennials are going to start becoming knitters, and like all kinds of weird crap is going to come out from like the old days. And I love it. We got to survive. Hey. We got to, got to turn to the elderly while we protect them to ask them from all the skills of how you survive with no more electricity when you got to go guarding your own stuffs. You know what I mean? We gotta take right? care. We gotta share. Yeah. yeah and then also that. one really great thing was that they allowed they extended patients' cards for 60 days. So if you oh, okay. so that's huge. Yeah. So patients are gonna, you know, be able to continue to access cannabis in the state of Hawaii. Okay, so is that like just like if you happen to be expiring this month, you get an extension. But me, I just signed up last month. Oh. I don't get no extension. How does that work? I, I don't know if that's totally clear. I know people who were about to get expired right. got, the, got the extension. Right, so I'm wondering, that's an interesting one. Like, cause I, I just signed up, that means my card is what good for a year, I yeah. guess. But it must be just depending on, right, how long this thing lasts, because if we go out six months from now, you'd have to, they'd have to amend that, right? And then extend it for people yeah. who are expiring. Right. So, uh, in the next few months right? right i think it's like that you just had like some people <laughs> took like leave and then the government said okay i tell you what you have paid, paid leave anyway and i know a lot of my friends are like oh shit can i just can i reverse i gotta take, <laughs> my, I gotta take my leave back <laughs> yeah. i don't want yeah i don't want to use my leave if i'm getting free leave anyway right kind of thing yeah 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 uh, absolutely so like when okay so when you say virtually uh, how does someone get their 329 card when they call you by phone? What's the process? So it's, it's still pretty similar. Um, you know, you book online, you complete your Department of Health um, online before we see you. Um, Tiana, you know, it's still helping everybody out because, you know, sometimes it's hard. So she's still helping everybody, um, but it'll just be phone call. When it's time for your appointment, um, I call you up and it's essentially the same thing that I do during an appointment. Um, we talk about your qualifying condition, how long you've had it, what other treatments you've used, medications, height, weight, et cetera. And then um, we submit your card to the Department of Health and then you receive it. The, the DOH is a little backed up, so it's been about a week. That's what they've been running as of this week. Now, you know, like uh, I was telling you, like, this is going to be my last uh, time smoking today before I switch to edibles. Now, I'm doing that because, you know, I just feel, even though it's uncomfortable, just like this whole lockdown, staying home when we don't want to, we want to go out, we want to eat out, we want to do all the normal things that we're used to. Like, I know the science is too strong that if it's, uh, if you, you know, if our lungs are Im immunocompromised in any way, right then we're just putting ourselves at a disadvantage at this time right now so i knowing that okay i'm out in the public i'm like hey i'm a smoker and i always make jokes and i you know i do like to be an advocate for the medicinal properties and all the wonderful things that a lot of people don't know about and it still has a negative stigma but are we or should we as a community a hawaii of uh, hawaii marijuana users and we're family should we be like pushing this new message of like hey wait a minute even though it is essential weed maybe for the next month or two or so maybe we all should take a little give our lungs a little break and switch to edibles and cbds and you know the other side it's still in the weed family but maybe right. you use different sides of the plant and we all kind of shift i mean i just wonder if this message is something we, we need to jump on right now and, and you know yeah whatever. so um you know anytime you use any uh, anything 
inhaled. You're gonna right. irritate the the cilia, the little fingers in uh, your lungs that help to keep right. everything clean and keep everything circulating. Um, for some people though, inhaled methods are really like one of the best forms. For instance, people <laughs> with um, PTSD who need relief right away, people with migraines, um, et cetera. So then it turns into harm reduction. So if you're going to use an inhaled method, what's probably the best form? And that's when I would recommend using a vaporizer. Okay, so that's going to be better than just going straight bur burning a joint. Yeah, so something, so this one is like a really super fancy one. This is the Mighty, this is by Crafty. So, um, you know, for people who are regular cannabis users, I think it's definitely worth the investment. Um, for people who especially prefer inhaled methods, um, this is, but there's a lot of vaporizers out there. You do not have to spend right. $250 on one. Um, they, they have a lot of different versions, um, but for inhaled methods, that's probably a little bit safer right now. Right. Um, was there, is there a difference between like, if you get like a super cheap one, would it be cause more harm than like, say like a, a better quality one or it doesn't really matter? Um, not necessarily. It just might not last as long. Oh, okay. Uh, so what you just showed us there, I mean, that looks like, like some real heavy duty stuff. Like what's happening with all that? What, how does that work? Is that just for grip? So, this they, is the, this is the crafty. Um, so they were the ones that invented the volcano. Right. So, you know, the one with the big vet bag. Okay. That fills it with. So this was one of the first um, companies that created a commercial vaporizer, and essentially, um, you know, you just put your cannabis in, right. screw the lid back on. Let's see how coordinated I am. Talk about online education right here, folks. I know, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm my favorite kind of homeschool right now. And then you just turn it on and, and then it once it like goes green. to oh, to right. green, green, it has like a little, a oh, little thing to nice. inhale. Nice. Wow. And then when you inhale with a crafty, you still have some of the smoke. So the difference between using a vaporizer and a joint is that um, vaporizers actually, they um, kind of heat the cannabis, heat slash steam the cannabis, so it releases the cannabinoids and terpenes, as opposed to when you use a joint, it combusts it, it burns you it. Burn the leaf and you're getting all that extra, right. like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. So it's not as irritating, and this is what I, I, you know, recommend for like a lot of my patients, cancer treatment, et cetera. So I was actually, you sent me the link after we're done this. I'll put this in the description for this video. But uh, so would you say that like that there's levels like, so, you know, you're burning a joint, there's combustion. So that's probably, you know, the out of the ways of inhaling, that's the worst one. And then you got the vaping's a little bit better. And then we, if you want to go a little bit better, edibles? Is that kind of like Edible. a nice, right? Absolutely. Okay. So okay. let's talk about dosing. Yes. <laughs> well, don't mind me. I'm going to light up as you talk. <laughs> Please light up. <laughs> yeah, let's talk because, uh, you know, um, when this, when we got the card, um, has, is it three years now? Yep. Three yep, years about now. Three years, um, yeah. two years. So we got the two years. Yes. Okay. We got the card, I guess, two years ago. And yeah. then, um, and then we got super into that show, Bong Appetit. Oh, yes. Yes. I so I we watch like, you know, every episode, I'm rewinding, I'm like figuring out how to, you know, getting all the tips from there. And I started, um, so I started making uh, weed butter. Oh, yeah. The yeah. first time went horribly, horribly <laughs> wrong. <laughs> we're going to try to shoot some of it tomorrow, our second attempt at it. We were still rookies, so it should mm -hmm. be entertaining. Um, but yeah, we got better and, and I started making cookies and stuff like that. Um, brownies and cookies and, right. and, uh, but the dosing was always an issue because yes. we, they have some videos online on how to get the right dosing. It's There's a lot of math and it's like, <laughs> I'm not really sure. So I only look can... Asian, but the math somehow <laughs> didn't come with the Asian look. So it's kind of been like, eat a fourth of a cookie. 
and wait 20 minutes, see uh, how you feel, and then and then add from there. But what what do you recommend? Yeah, let's talk dosing. So mm -hmm. I I actually recommend um, starting with a tincture that you know the dosing of. So um, here, for example, sorry. Um, <laughs> Ooh, ready PG I know, right? <laughs> PG-13 now. Uh, so this is from um, Aloha Green. Okay, so nah. you can see it has the total um, THC, total yeah. CBD in it. And um, so let's see. So this one actually has the, the milligrams per mil. Yeah. So so wait, hold on. Burr, burr, burr. Sorry, it's backwards. Okay, yeah. so this one it has 9.9 .9 milligrams per right. mil. Right. So because there's no um, calculator, like two milligrams per kilogram, take this. Right. For most people, I recommend using titration. So what does titration mean? Titration means starting at a very low dose and slowly increasing. What does starting at a very low dose mean? So typically I recommend people start at, if you're an experienced cannabis user, I would probably start at two milligrams. Um, so if I were gonna take this, sorry, it's backwards. So don't mind me looking all wonky, waving okay. it around. Perfect. Um, it's basically milligrams, sorry, I have to do math. Milligrams per mil divided by 20. Um, and and I, I'll share this formula with you. Um, so I would take 9.9 .9 divided by 20. So this is basically um, a half a milligram per drop. Wow. Um, so, and, and I'll show, I'll share this formula. Basically you take the entire milligrams per the bottle. So this one has 438 milligrams. Okay. You divide it by the volume, which is a 30 milliliter bottle. Right. And then you divide it by 20, which is the drops in the milliliter. Right, right, right. Okay. So, so basically, but okay. So do you have to kind of have a guideline? Like for me, I thought like, uh, I thought 10 milligrams was sort of the standard, but you're saying, oh, that might be too much for, somebody so for a lot of people that might be and the reason why um is because when you use cannabis when you use it orally it's metabolized in your liver so it becomes five to ten times stronger but you know what i'm saying like a lot of times when you find th thc gummies or one of these sort of products right they, they typically have the 10 milligram per chewy or per gummy yes per, right usually so, so the most common dosing that we'll see is two, five, and 10. Okay, I see, two, five, and 10, okay. Um, so I, I would recommend that everybody find their perfect minimum dose that works for you. Yeah, right, so like if, you ha if you're a total rookie, like no harm and why not just start with the two milligram? Because you know what I mean, you don't know where you're you at. You can more. always take more, but yeah. you don't want to be like yeah. too deep. Right. And then I have to wait it out. Let me tell you, once you take it, you can't take it back. <laughs> it takes a while. It just remember, so just call, you know, you will, this too shall pass. Breathe. Yes. Ride it out. Yeah. Just remember, it's a chemical, it'll, it'll subside, right? But, you know, that this is all very, like, great advice because, yeah, I mean, it is very, it's much more fun to just go, oh, I feel a little something. Right. And then let me add a little something, but just to, you know, go slow. It's just so smart. It's better that way, right? So. Yes, it's like, you know, two milligrams, and I recommend increasing by one milligram every day. For most people, a majority of the people that, that I see, um, two to five milligrams is a pretty decent dose for daytime, and five to 15 milligrams is a pretty good dose for evening. Now, if you're using this, if you're, it depends, right, what you're using, um, using it for, right? So, like, if it's, if it's to uh, help with pain management um, or, or if you're trying to, like, like you said, you up the dose for evening if you're going, if you need help sleeping or, you know, something like that. But, like, for pain management, is two milligrams, is that enough for, to 
Well, you just got to try it. You just got to try it out. Right? It's, I mean, so in it's, general, for, uh, for your patients, like, it, does, that, it, does that seem to work, help patients for pain? Yes. And, and so typically mm-hmm. what, what we're also looking at is level of impairment. So, mm-hmm. so daytime use is typically the, the dose where you don't feel impaired, where you can still like, you know, function, do all your stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and it tends to take the edge off because, you know, most of my patients are still working. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of the dose that they can, that they can use and still function. So that's why I say two to five is pretty, pretty average. Now, for those of uh, the people who are, uh, they just want to be CBD users, people who are interested in doing CBD, you know, it's the, uh, it's the one that's just totally innocent, right? It's legal. It's not like, right? You can, it's like, the society looks at that as like, okay, that's the good boy. And then, THC, <laughs> you naughty, you gangster. But it's like, okay, for, for those who want just the CBD, now, can you tell us like some of the basics of that? I heard that if you just take straight CBD with not even a drop of THC, then you won't activate it. Is that true? Do you need a little or, bit of no, THC? No, it just takes a longer, like THC something? acts as a catalyst. Okay. That's something like that. what we heard. Right. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, actually it is. Okay. Um, but you can still like, you know, get like, CBD and and add a small amount of THC. So I I think that we have to reframe the entire conversation when it comes to CBD. CBD is a supplement. You should just take it every day like you take a vitamin. It's like the equivalent Uh of, you know, vitamin C, calcium. Um, I've never heard that. Like already that opens my mind. I'm like, okay. Right? right? And, And THC is more episodic. So THC should be used more like Tylenol, right? I need to switch my roles, don't I? Sounds like it. Sounds like <laughs> and and oh, these are goals. Goal. Goals. Hey, it's, I'm here. I'm here to change, man. No, I mean, you know, because bottom line is like you just need to manage your pain and manage yeah. your anxiety. And oh, if, yeah. if CBD can do that for you. I'll be honest, um, yeah. With just a little splash of THC Seriously. now and then, not in the form of smoke, but in, in yeah. an edible or whatever. Or I mean, this sound then. like the words sound like nails on a chalkboard to me right now. Just like there's an instinct to like, what? Like just the thought of not smoking is like, I'm taking it hard on mm-hmm. it. But I do know, you know, it's like everything else in the world right now. I mean, there's just the science, bro. Why are you trying to fight the science? We got to stay in and we got to stay in. If it's going to save lives, then what do you like? There's, you know, there's no like, oh, but it's not fun. Like, it's just, dude, what is the science saying? You know, what is, what is the right answer? So I'm like, oh, I know so, it's going to suck, but I got to do it. Let me ask you this about the CBD. Um, you know, they sell CBD online and like all these, like, um, I don't know what you call like um, multi-level marketing. You know, mm. they've got their CBD supplements. But do you think it's better? Does does a dispensary sell CBD with like a little bit of THC, and is it better to get that right. versus like just buying like right. is, is there certain quality or some that are better than others? Or guide us, May. Guide us. Yes. <laughs> so, okay. TV so, lo- so the disp- if you have a card, the dispensaries are awesome. Yeah, go there, get CBD. Um, but you know, there's a there's a bunch of really really good companies out there. Um, Hawaiian Choice, hands down, um, one of my favorite um, local brands. Um, they have a, a THC version, THC free version, which is really important for a lot of people who can't test positive. When you're looking for CBD, what you want to look for is that it's organic, full spectrum meaning that it was not created in a lab. It's not synthetic. Um, it's also not an isolate. I know a lot of people love isolates and I, I love isolates for certain things, but for regular kind of consumption, I, I recommend um, organic, full spectrum and lab tested. Um, Colorado probably honestly has really some of the most high quality CBD out there. And my Colorado brands are Charlotte's Web and Panacea. Those are the two I really love. Wow. Okay. Can you order those online? You just Yes, you can get them online. 
and um, Charlotte's web is pretty reasonable. So when we look at dosing, what's, what's the research? Like how much CBD should you be taking? Um, for most, what we're looking at is 15 to 25 milligrams a day. Um, 25 milligrams tends to be good for people who have a lot of anxiety. Um, and, and there's some good research on that. So I'll, I'll, I'll also connect um, the, the article that talks about that. I, I'll send that in the attachments. Um, but CBD is very subtle. So it's not like you take it and an hour later, you're gonna feel different. It's more like you take it every day and 30 days later, you can kind of see the difference because it works by um, decreasing inflammation and for anxiety, kind of tamping down the fear, um, the fears, you know, areas in the brain. Oh, wow. It's kind of like this lockdown. We got like 30 days. We don't necessarily yes. get immediate results. You just have to trust. And then hopefully at the end, you might see, oh, but you know, that's just the way it works, right? That's the way it works. Yeah, CBD definitely, it's, 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 it really should be like a, a supplement. It's boring. You take it with your calcium, you know, now, and you don't I, think about it. I'm familiar that the CBD is really good for pain uh, relief and muscle relaxing and sort of like this healing, you know, vibe. But <clears throat> what about, like, I know you don't get the same thing that THC gives you the, you know, the, the high in the mind, but what does it, how does it affect your mind, your thinking, or your even your emotions, or how you feel? So, um, a couple of of different things that it that it does to help um, to help with that. Um, one is it's uh, it's neuroprotective, um, so it can be really helpful for people who've had uh, traumatic brain injuries or who have had strokes, or just as a preventative measure. It also, if people are using too much THC and they're getting that um, short-term memory loss, CBD can help with that. What'd you say? So, huh? what? No, yeah, what'd you, what? What was the question? Like, what, he's like, what'd you say? Short-term memory loss? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I know. I, 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 I can relate a little bit. Okay, go ahead. Um, and then um, the way that it kind of helps with, um, with, anxiety is so we all have this kind of um, part in our brain it's the amygdala it's where um, we experience fear right that kind of fight or flight so CBD along with THC helps to kind of like tamper her down picture her as like a little unruly kitten oh yeah CBD kind of helps to like calm her down Oh yeah, like I always like to think of it as the amygdala is like the resting bitch face of our brain <laughs> you look there to go okay shit we're not in the mood are we today i'm just gonna have to stay away from you check the make like, oh shit shit looking dark today okay like. <laughs> right exactly exactly so she helps to kind of calm that down but it works over time so most of my patients don't notice the effects of cbd until they stop taking it oh and then they're like oh that actually was helping okay Okay. Wow. So does CBD, um, because we, we do have CBD. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't take it. No. I really, I, you know what, he I did it topical. Take, I've yeah. done stuff like that, but, but, I, but I didn't notice. Oil. I was like, you know. We have the oil, you, and then we say drop it under your tongue and, right. you know, but it, it, are there CBD pills that you can take? Like you talk about supplements, like do they make it in a pill form? Yeah. So Charlotte's Web, their capsules are super dope. I don't I don't like know anybody there, so I'm not like plugging their products, but yeah. they're really good. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. cool. I, I have a hard time. I put, I, I use it topically, but right. uh, I have a hard time with putting it um, under my tongue. The taste is for me, but it, it's weird because it doesn't have a taste, right? But it does, though. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's, it's a, subtle. It's, it's very yeah. subtle. It's like, I mean, it tastes so, oily. It tastes like an oil. Oily, yeah. Right, you know, just, One thing you can also do as a baker. Yes. Um, so you know those um, silicone candy molds? Yeah, right. I have lots. Um, yeah, so you know, just do it, you know, melt chocolate and do individual dosing 
in those. That's, oh, that's okay. the most important thing when you're making edibles is that you do individual dosing. Okay. So like, like this, you know, like you're putting 10 milligrams in here, 10 milligrams right. in here, 10 oh. milligrams okay. in here. And then every 10 milligrams is quarantined from the other community. From the of other ones. Yes. Social distancing amongst milligrams. Yes. Thank Social you. distance your milligrams. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Okay, wait, well, I want to end with this and because uh, I want to post this up uh, by 420. Um, and, and by the way, thank you so much for doing this. I mean, I, I've been, what's been happening is I've been trying to go live at 420, but it's just been, you know, it's like it's been spotty. So I was like, today was the first time I thought, I'm going to record this with you, get it right, perfect, and then I'll put it up by 420 and then we'll just do a watch party and answer questions if you feel like it. But anyway, this has been so informative. But a lot of people don't know that you are a you're you're a nurse, right? Yes. So uh, I nurse practitioner. I'm a family nurse practitioner. Okay. And sorry, the dogs. You know? like, that's right. That's my girl. What's up? <laughs> like, no professionals up in here. Essential workers in the house. So as a, you know, a nurse practitioner, from, what, from your point of view, just talk to me from a human point of view, from your experience, from your knowledge, from your wisdom, like what, what do you see happening here? Where, I mean, where should, what's going to happen with Hawaii and the medical uh, supplies and like, what are we going to do, man? Talk to me. So um, I feel actually, so, um, you know, my husband is at Queens ICU. I okay. have worked at Queens for, you know, over five years. Wow. They are a COVID center for Oahu, for Honolulu. And, you know, they have so many amazing providers there that I feel confident that, you know, we're in good hands. So I think that as okay. individuals, as, you know, just normal people right. walking down the street, right. the okay. main okay. thing that, that we can do, number one, um, Stay home, stay your ass at home, she's saying. Cheers, stay cheers, home. Cheers. Um, <laughs> yeah. Wash your hands. Uh, yeah. When you do go out, you know, the fabric masks are fine. If you, if you want to wear a mask, I do not think it's a bad idea to wear a mask. Um, and any you know, of the fabric ones that people, you know, that you can buy that they're making at home are really good. Um, and then really, ways that you can boost your immunity naturally yeah. number one is get sleep you need to sleep period um fruits and vegetables every day with something of your meal walking around your neighborhood um because all of our gyms are closed which is yeah. so tragic so even just like a 20 minute walk to yeah. just kind of get some exercise and then stress reduction so you know if you haven't tried meditation Holotrophic breathing, hey, holla. <laughs> no, no, I've heard, I've heard that being said. What is holotrophic breathing, really? So holotrophic breathing is a breathing style. So it's basically um, where if you were, so right now we can practice it right now. Put your hand on your stomach. Okay. And when you breathe in, feel how your stomach expands, yeah. right? And then you breathe out through your mouth. The holotrophic breathing is when you do half into your stomach and then the last part into your lungs. So through your mouth. And I'll, I'll also include some, some links because um, holotrophic breathing is, you know, for people who, you know, cause whenever I sit down and try to meditate, I always get super bored. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's not a very uh, yeah high highly active crazy like st highly stimulant uh, activity. Though. But it makes you very aware, but, right? right? You're conscious of like trying to make sure you breathe half in your half in your lungs, and then <laughs> then out in your mouth. So it's like you, you at least have something to focus on. Exactly. So so that's why I love for for me for my practice. I really love holotropic breathing because it uh, it like gives you something to do, and you know like. 10 to 15 minutes a day of just kind of doing, focusing on different breathing exercises, I think is really um, important. And, you know. I love anything that sort of helps you 
uh, to focus, right? So like even this, it's very, I can't explain it. It's like we're playing an instrument. If you, first when you start, you're like, oh, is anyone listening? Am I doing this right? And then if you ever just like, maybe someone walks out the room and you just start jamming, <laughs> whatever that vibe is where you're just focused and you wake up and it's like, oh, 10 minutes gone by, you're just in this groove. And these conversations have been like that for me. It's like, uh, it's, it feels similar where it's like meditative and the very just sort of, right. you know, doing it. This, right, the, right. this free, this, we're talking and we're just thinking about the things we're well, saying, you know, you know. It seems like something that's so easy to do, but it, it really does take effort. Um, I, I, you know, I used to do yoga quite, uh, quite uh, a bit. And, um, you know, they tell you just um, breathe and I want you to center yourself and put everything out of the world. And then like you do it for like 30 seconds and then now you're wondering like, should I cook tonight? <laughs> should I, you know? like This is like 10 minutes of me trying to figure out what I'm going to do for the rest of the night, right? So it was like, um, and no, it's like sometimes like you really do need to shut everything out sometimes and really yeah. just center yourself. And so, um, yeah, I, I can see how how focusing on breathing can bring your attention into just, you know, just yourself and not the outside world. So, um, yeah, I think I'll try that. I'll definitely try that. Yes. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll send you guys links to everything. So yes. that way. That's awesome. Yeah. Man, thank you so much. I mean, this information is so needed, and there's a lot of us out there who could use the benefits of this uh, miracle plant with the, with the physical, and the mental, and the, everything that we could use from it to calm our ass down. Is there anything? <laughs> is there anything that you um, would want to make sure that anybody should know, or would that you want to make sure people hear? Right. Besides the five she just listed, which is like, wash your um, hands, stay your ass home. <laughs> well, like, like, like yeah, you no, know, in, in regards to anything, right? The coronavirus yeah. or or um. Yeah, or like what do you tell your kids? Or, what do you tell your kids? Hey. Yeah. This is what we need to be vigilant of right now. Yeah, so, um, you know, mainly I think the hardest thing with kids is they, they want to go out. Like, you know, like, it's a really, I'm from, I'm Samoan. I have a huge Samoan family. Everyone's like, why aren't you letting St. Olive go hang out with her cousins, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. And, and so... I, I think, you know, just really, you know, let's find a hobby. We have 30 days to kind of, you know, focus on ourselves again. It's almost, you know, it's like a, it's a gift in, in disguise. And, you know, it's going to be really hard for a lot of small businesses. So I, you know, if you have a favorite restaurant and it's offering takeout, like go get takeout. Take, getting takeout food is actually pretty safe when we look at, um, you know, transmission and, and how this disease is transmitted. Um, so I would say, you know, continue to support local. Go The farmer's markets have like really stepped it up to where the farmers are providing produce like Oahu Fresh. Yeah. Um, so Manson, yeah, yeah. They had a good one at, at Manson for 50 bucks. Uh, uh, like fruit yes, eggs. that one was awesome. 30 uh, eggs in there, 10 avocados. It was like this. It's 15 pretty, apples, 15 oranges, yeah. spinach. It was like, yeah. So, yeah. you know, you can split it with somebody if you don't need all those eggs or whatever. But right, it's, it's right. pretty, some pretty cool deals of uh, businesses trying to help each other, you know, everybody in the community trying to help each other. So, right. yeah, we got to keep spreading it, man. We got, whoo, we got to act this next two weeks. The next two weeks is kind of like, you know, we'll determine a lot, right? For those, like yeah. for the amount of gowns and ventilators and masks we have, and like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like a race. I'm just hoping, like, it's like to the extent we stay in, to the extent we won't overextend our supplies and resources and stuff, right? So. I, I, okay, so I have to ask. I just we just sure. need to get it out Please. there, but like, um, what do you think? And I probably ask you this every time I see you. When do you think, or in and if? Oh, great, great. Last question. Is we gonna be legalized completely. Like, will this help exp ex you know expedite that process or hinder it? You know, the uh, Hawaii almost fully legal thing. Because we're almost yeah, there. So help. I I maybe. Um, I I think that the the we made the first um, really huge um, step in in Hawaii um, in 2018 when we decriminalized cannabis. Um, so up to three grams is decriminalized. So decriminalization um, is huge because that's kind of the first step. 
Right. And I think that when we we look at legalization, legalization is going to happen in Hawaii. We just have to make sure that it happens in a way that's number one, equitable um, for the people. So, you know, I love the dispensaries. The dispensaries are great, but we've had a program for 20 years. It has been our local growers um, who have kept this program alive. Um, so I would really like to see a lot of these, um, you know, growers, these collectives um, have a place at the table. So, so I would um, love, and I would love our community of growers, yeah, our, like it's my family, our community <laughs> of growers to reach out and teach everybody how to be good with our hands and garden and grow anything from fruits and plants to, and all of Hawaii's like, you know, people who can do that, we need to learn it because I want to make everything ourselves. I mean, who knows if the electricity and the internet's going to work the whole time. <laughs> we gotta, right. I want to make my own. It's like, you know, the, the farmers, the farmers are our are, are new CEOs of this new world. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. I turn to you, farmers, help us, teach us. <laughs> You're the value. That, gonna... that could be uh, on your podcast, you should get some farmers. Oh, definitely. That's definitely yeah. next. I can't wait. Well, if you know anyone, tell them to hit us up. I'll send them your way. Yay. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad that we got to talk to you on 329 Day. I'm sorry yeah. your, your original yeah. event got canceled, but May, you're amazing. Go check her out at Molly A. Cannabis Clinic. That's all. That's where you can find out uh, at yep. Molly Cannabis Clinic. And they're doing virtual signups, and you can ask all the good questions if you can get everything that you need to know from here. <laughs> Okay, yes. Mary, we'll talk to you Thank soon. Thank you so much. We'll just hang out. Stay and safe. Okay, bye. 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 bye.